Good afternoon. Welcome to our panel on advancing accessibility in smart destinations. My name is Marina Diotalevi uh, from the UNWTO. I'm the head of ethics, culture, and social responsibility. Before I start, I will have to excuse some of the panelists who didn't make it. Unfortunately, uh, due to bad weather, we have uh, uh, Mr. Sergio Fontilla from Samsung, who cannot join, could not join us today, and also Mr. Manel uh, Alcaide from Visual, Visual Spy. But although he cannot be here with us this afternoon, he sent a video that we are going to see at the end from the three presentations. So before I introduce our three um, colleagues and speakers this afternoon, I would like to make a small um, a presentation of the context in which we are going to discuss this accessibility panel. Uh, this panel about accessibility for all, it's um, focused most, uh, mostly into accessibility in terms of inclusion. Inclusion of um, persons uh, who have the right to enjoy leisure, sports, travel, and tourism at the, same, uh, at the same conditions as everybody else. I would like to remind that overall, globally in the world, we have 15% of the world population who has some sort, some forms of disability. This represents around 1 billion people. These persons encounter serious obstacles and barriers to access information, facilities, products, and services at the destination. To this, we will have to consider and add the rapidly aging population, mostly in industrialized countries. Uh, it is estimated that by 2050, around 20% of the world population will be over 60 years of age. This means that an increase in the rate of access requirements uh, and access um, services are requested at destination level. So it's, it's a huge segment of the population which have access requirements and represents also a huge market for tourism. So this is why accessibility is not only a must for an inclusive tourism development, it is also an enormous business opportunity as it is as it improves the quality, the sustainability and the competitiveness of a destination and increases visitor and local satisfaction. At Overall, it benefits all the, the society and the population. So during, during this smart, smart talk, we, we will hear the experiences from destinations. We will hear about needs and challenges of persons with disability and the seniors. And uh, also we'll see and hear about smart solutions uh, by entrepreneurs. Now I will introduce uh, the speakers one by one according to the order of intervention. Uh, we will start by the uh, presentations concerning smart destination, accessible destinations. Uh, we will start with Mr. Olaf Schlieper. Uh, Mr. Schlieper is innovations manager at the German, at the Na German National Tourist Board. He is responsible for sustainability strategy and the creation of sustainable and barrier-free products. He is also responsible for international promotion of Germany as a sustainable destination and uh, for the organization of the Barrier-Free Tourism Day at ITD Tourism Fair. Uh, Mr. Schlieper will be our first uh, uh, panelist. He will be followed by Mr. Daniel Suntunegi who is um, the head of international relations at Red, Red Estable. Red Estable is a um, Spanish network for accessible tourism. Uh, Mr. Suntunegi has been uh, working in the hospitality sector for 14 years 
and he is also currently the co-founder and managing director of Accessible Spain Travel, specialized in incoming travel agencies uh, to Spain, catering for travelers with accessibility needs. He is at the same time uh, uh, representing Rete Stable at this panel. And uh, Rete Stable has developed uh, the self-diagnosis uh, and accessible tourism promotion platform, Spain is Accessible. We will hear more about this um, at, um, immediately. Then uh, it, uh, the, it will be the turn of Mr. Uh, Roberto, Roberto uh, Torrena Cristobal, who is the director of the Digital Experience Transformation and in Innovation Department at Illunion technology and accessibility, which is the, the technology and consultancy uh, company um, belonging to the business group ONCE, which is the National Organization for the Blind. Uh, Mr. Torrena has 10 years experience in the company and has led a national international um, mobile and web application development and R&D and innovative initiatives. Um, all of them designed with accessibility and designed for all criteria. So these are the three panelists which are present, that are present today. The last one who, has, who could not be uh, attending, unfortunately, but has sent in this afternoon a video that we are going to see um, after the presentation of the three panelists, is Mr. Manel Alcaide, who is the CEO of Visualfy. Uh, Mr. Al-Qaeda is an entrepreneur with more than 16 years uh, business management experience in sectors related to performing arts and new technology. Uh, he is specialized in developing projects directed to people with differential capabilities with the aim of achieving, achieving a more egalitarian future for everybody. Uh, his application, his solution um, is focused for persons with hearing uh, impairment. So we will start. We will start with the presentation by Mr. Olaf Schlieper. Please, Mr. Olaf, please. Yeah. Thank you very much for the introduction and hello to you all. And thank you very much for the opportunity to present Destination Germany and its activities according to barrier-free tourism. Let me uh, just show a short ag agenda. It's not a long presentation. I just want to show you a short introduction, a film about our activities. Um, and then um, I brought to you a showcase about a quite new national information system, which is called Tourism for All. But uh, first, uh, let's start with the cinema part. But we need sound. GNTV and its partners are reaching out not only to people with disabilities, but also to families with children, older holidaymakers, and those traveling for health reasons. That's more than 140 million people in the European Union alone. And they're doing so successfully. Germany already has a well-connected transport network and plenty of accessible accommodation, restaurants, and attractions. Guided tours are adapted to the needs of a wide range of disabilities. Germany's national parks and nature parks offer many barrier-free experiences. The GNTV showcases the variety and credibility of these offerings through various activities. These include the Germany Travel Mart, the largest inbound tourism workshop for destination Germany, where buyers from around the world can get an overview of the German market. Together with its partners, the GNTV has successfully staged the Barrier-Free Tourism Day at the ITV, the world's largest travel trade show, for several years now. The GNTV also promotes Germany as a barrier-free travel destination through its numerous representative offices abroad. Consumers, journalists, tour operators and other key players are kept 
up to date with the accessible tourism market in Germany at events and workshops and via the GMTV's online channels. The GMTV actively supports the Reisen für alle, Travel for All, national certification scheme in order to develop and promote barrier-free tourism. So that more and more people can enjoy accessible and hassle-free holidays in destination Germany. So now I would like to give you a more detailed information about this travel for all information system. And by the way, I have uh, printed information about it. So if you would like to have one, uh, just talk to me after the panel discussion. Um, travel for all is aiming uh, a central idea to have a consistent, consistent quality and consistent labeling, a nationwide information system about accessible tourism projects. So it should cover all Germany. You may know that we have, that we don't have a national tourism organization in Germany focusing on projects within Germany. Tourism is on the shoulders of our 16 federal states. So it's not a national task, it's a, a task of the 16 federal states. And e each of these states had a different approach to check the accessibility of tourism products. They had different certification systems and different labels and logo, different wording. And so the idea was to, to put it all together and to create one professional, reliable information system for the whole nation. And this is now ready to use, and it is in use uh, in Germany. So the idea is to really check the accessibility of tourism products, hotels and others, and then promote it even uh, online uh, on different platforms using the same system, a quite sophisticated and in-depth system for the whole nation. Uh, we have many, many project partners, which was really necessary to make the system fitting right to the needs of uh, people with accessibility needs. Um, so it really should fit to the handicapped person. And on the other hand, it, it must be handled by the tourism trade and the, the tourism partners. So they had all been invited by the Federal Ministry of Economic Affairs and Energy. They paid for the whole project, the initiating of the project. Um, and well, for several years, all the major stakeholders in German tourism sat on the same table and talked about this product and pulled the same rope in the same direction to get a good result, you know. So we have transport companies, these are only examples. We have hotel chains, we have regional destination marketing and management organizations, the National Tourist Board, and many other associations, and the major, major association for handicapped people. So the National Blind People Organization, people uh, organization ca uh, handling the, the um, accessibility needs of, of wheelchair users, of deaf people, etc. And now in all Germany, trained staff is walking around and really checking the spots um, according to their accessibility for these mentioned target groups. So um, mobility impaired persons, um, deaf persons, people with visual impairments, and also people with cognitive impairments. And this is how it goes. Here we have the assessment at the spot so the uh, people go around with laptops and type in all the, um, the details in how far a train station or a hotel is accessible. Um, the detail will, will directly go to a database. Um, then we have a quality check by a national tourism organization. And from then, the information is sent it to all the 16 federal states and their websites and maybe some regional websites as well. It is um, starting this year sent to the German National Tourist Sports website, so we have an overview of all these assessed tourism projects through all Germany in German and English. And of course, it is possible to send it to third parties who are interested, hotel platforms or car association, whatever. And uh, the database will be ready in June. We're now working with the interim database, but the, the real one 
will be accessible in June and we will roll out in, until October because in October, you may know, there is the world's conference uh, for destinations for all in Brussels one, from the 1st to the 2nd of October and this is the place to be for us. We are also goal sponsor and we will showcase this project. So what is checked? It's everything along the travel chain. So it's accommodation, restaurants, the sites, tourist information, even airports, huge um, entities, train stations, and hiking routes and cycling routes. We now have certifications even of long distance hiking, hiking routes so that you really know about the accessibility of the road itself, about the hotels around the restaurants and uh, train station, etc. No? A lot of work, but now it's ready. And the new development is that, that we check whole tourism regions. Um, so in former times, you just checked single entities like hotels, and now whole tourism regions get under certification. They do the assessment, and handicapped people can be sure that each part of the travel chain has been uh, thought of, and so they can have reliable and very deep information on these regions. The hotels and all the others get the certification. They can use it for marketing. They can use special logos. Uh, but the major part is the client. And we can use the database and do texture search or even click on what he really needs. And then he gets uh, these kind of results. And let's say Novotel Hamburg. And if you click there, you get very detailed information. So this is German, but it will be also available in English with the in-depth information, how many centimeters the doors have, how the showers are, uh, and how far the hotel is ready for blind people. So very detailed information. And we talked to the um, handicapped person, and they said in how deep, how uh, they, they, they advised us about the depth of information they really need to create trust. So it should be digital, but reliable. So we don't want hotel owners to say, well, I'm ready for handicapped persons. That not, that's not the way what we decided. We really train staff to go to the hotel and check everything. And it's not only about checking, it's also about training. Every hotel and all the entities, they have to undergo a training. The management as well as the counter staff has to do a personal training and an online training. It's an, an, a fixed part of the assessment. So I think um, that's enough for an introduction, and I thank you very much. Right. Thank, thank you very much, Olaf. And now I would like to call uh, Daniel uh, to make his presentation also about the destination um, Spain. Accessible Destination Spain. Please, uh, Daniel. Thank you, Marina. Um, I would like to thank first the uh, organizing committee and everyone involved in, in this event. We are very, uh, we're very honored to be here. Um, it's great to, to share uh, space in this panel of such uh, high level professionals and industry leaders. Um, I'm here today representing um, our association. Uh, Red Estable is composed of uh, more than 120 uh, organizations in Spain working for um, accessible tourism. And I'm here representing uh, uh, all of them and, and our president, Diego Gonzalez. And I will be um, first introducing uh, briefly our our organization. After that, I will be explaining um, some of the projects that uh, some of our members have undertaken recently. And finally, I will be uh, explaining into more detail the EPAC technology, which uh, we believe is very relevant for, for today's uh, topic, which is uh, advancing uh, accessibility in, in smart destinations. Um, so who we are, what is what's Red Estable? We, we are a network. Um, it's composed uh, of, as I said, more than 120 companies uh, that are 
directly or indirectly involved in, in accessible tourism. We, um, we are a very, very, very diverse and we include uh, from hotels, restaurants, specialized travel agencies, tour operators, uh, in, uh, architects, uh, engineers. Um, we, we believe that uh, a network has a, has a great strength and especially uh, connecting, especially in the travel industry. Um, I would, we believe that the tourist industry has, uh, has a great need in terms of, uh, of connecting um, such um, diverse uh, type of uh, stakeholders. And we, we think this, this, this allows us to, to work towards the, our same goal, as we, we, we share one goal in Red Estable, and that is making a more uh, inclusive sector. Um, I will be uh, explaining some of the uh, projects um, that I, I hope you find interesting. Um, I will be explaining the EPAC technology, which has been uh, recently awarded by um, ITH, the Institute um, for the Hospitality Te uh, Institute Technological in Spain as the award uh, for accessibility in smart destinations. Um, and I'll also explain you some, some other projects uh, by some other of our, our members. Um, another one is uh, Chef Voice. Chef Voice is a voice assisted uh, restaurant menu. This uh, helps uh, basically anyone um, and that's what makes it interesting. Um, it, it, is, uh, it is possible to, um, to showcase it in a language. Uh, it is, of course, mainly focused uh, for persons with uh, reduced um, or imper uh, visual impairment or, or with difficulties to read. But it actually helps everyone. And I think that's, that's what makes it interesting when we speak about uh, accessibility. Um, I'm sure you all know the, uh, the advantages of, uh, of approach and, and, and manage accessibility uh, from a universal accessibility perspective. Um, we can uh, develop uh, different applications that not necessarily have to be focused on persons with disabilities, but which actually help everyone. And I found this a particular um, uh, example uh, interesting. Um, something like restaurants, of course, like here there's many, tool, m many people from many, many countries and this can apply to anyone. Um, we all have restaurants. We all have, each restaurant has menus. And a simple application with, uh, with a smartphone and a QR code makes uh, people capable to um, uh, hear the menu and for any other person um, has a possibility to, um, to visualize and find great um, uh, information about, just for example, recommendations. Um, owners can, can update this, this menu. Um, so this is, a, this, is, this is an example of, um, of a, in my opinion, a, a great, uh, um, it's a good example of innovation and, and technology coming together uh, towards uh, accessibility and uh, towards a solution that uh, helps everyone, both uh, with travelers and, and citizens, right? We spoke about this um, today with... Um, I say Hotel is an example of an online platform that helps uh, basically suppliers, any um, any organization uh, providing um, uh, lodging uh, um, in the travel industry. So what happens is uh, many, many hotel owners don't actually know their level of energy efficiency, accessibility. So it's a great example from, uh, from another of our members, ITH. They, um, they're, providing, um, they're providing a tool 
for, my, for owners to, to know their level of accessibility. I will speak about that um, a bit later. Uh, MDQ is developing audio and video guides on sign language. Um, this is a great tool for museums, monuments. Uh, again, it helps um, everyone uh, coming to a museum instead of just using an audio guide, it'd be an audio and, and video guide on sign language. And this has been developed within different monuments and museums in Spain. Um, Amphone has developed also an audio induction loop system, um, which most of you should um, will probably know. Um, these are induction um, uh, loop systems that help uh, people with hearing impairment and hearing difficulties um, um, hear, actually. And they have developed it in a large scale. And this is also quite uh, relevant. In this case, for the Santander uh, bank uh, offices. Um, now I go back to the uh, EPAC technology. This is the, uh, the most relevant uh, case and example that I wanted to, to be uh, explaining today. The EPAC uh, comes as a solution for uh, travel destinations, uh, public organizations wanting to promote their destination. Um, could be Oviedo um, uh, promoting itself and auditing and finding out their level of accessibility. Uh, could, be, uh, could be a region, could be a country. Uh, wanted to know first, uh, how is their accessibility? Uh, what's their degree? Uh, are they doing good? Are they doing bad? Uh, where can they improve? Um, and what are doing terribly wrong. So uh, this, is a, this is a great tool. I think it's really relevant. Um, it is for any travel or uh, any, any, any destination. Uh, wanting to first know if, it's a, if it can be um, promoted as, a, as an accessible travel destination for all. Um, secondly, it can uh, promote uh, the communication between uh, travelers and, and travel services. Um, and this helps uh, transmitting uh, confidence for travelers. As you know, having, a, for example, uh, a disability sometimes um, uh, makes it um, very uh, difficult, as Marina has said previously, there is a lack of information. So having a platform where you can consult and you can um, uh, be informed of how is the destination or what's the destination offering. Um, it's, a, it's a great help. Um, it's, it's a great help for travelers. And that, 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 that provides confidence and, and security. Um, and as I said, it provides a tool for, uh, for travel destinations to know their, their degree of, of accessibility. Um, the platform comes in two main different parts. Uh, one is the uh, audits platform. First, of course, we have to audit, we have to know um, how are the resources. So EPAD comes from an uh, advanced and developed um, uh, system that actually has been uh, in use for many years as a fast uh, uh, resource uh, protocols for auditing and accessibility. Uh, so what, 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 they've used, what they've done is, is developing uh, from, a technological, from a technological uh, point of view um, this, uh, um, let's say, um, physical uh, way of uh, auditing. The second part is focused on promoting and marketing your destination as, as an accessible destination. And that includes the development of a website and a, a mobile application. This is how this technology looks like for a, a recent project. Spain is accessible. Um, it was, as you see, um, it, was, it was 
so it was basically uh, focused on, um, on promoting Spain as an accessible destination, which was which is still very needed. And so it's, there was it was a great effort on on all the team, um, many many resources. Um, as you see on your left, the administration uh, platform for uh, owners. This is what you can see uh, as an administration platform for owners. What is the interesting here is that either um, the services can be audited externally or could be uh, audited by the same um, owner. I will show you that a bit later. And that comes as a first step of having a um, very developed um, platform, which is the PAT platform that diagnoses uh, the accessibility in a very precise um, way. Um, this this uh, process is, is also um, uh, standardized, which is very important because uh, you end up having your destination with uh, a standardized and homogenized um, way of um, communicating and auditing uh, accessibility. Um, and that, 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 that makes um, a lot of its veracity. The, this, uh, this data um, basically um, connects automatically with the website and the mobile application. So within one same system, you're working both on your, uh, on your data of your destination uh, related to accessibility and on the promotion and marketing of these services. This platform also allows to generate an accessibility statement, which is very useful for many, many suppliers that want to know and want to have, um, uh, let's say, um, a statement, a, a document that they can use to communicate. Uh, it could be on their hotel sites, it could be on their, um, on their marketing and promotional material. And on your right side, you can see the both the website and the um, mobile application. As you see, the website is both, uh, uh, and the mobile application is, is developed under AAA uh, accessibility standards. Um, What's interesting is the platform can be filtered by service and accessibility needs. This is something you can see here. The, so someone with, uh, let's say, hearing impairment um, can actually um, uh, filter and find services um, based on his, her accessibility uh, need and also by destination or by type of service. Um, the apps uh, provide, as you know, uh, a great, uh, it's, 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 a, uh, it's a great tool for immediacy. Um, the, the keypad um, technology provides GPS and, the, and the also the possibility to, to add reviews which uh, which helps um, which helps a lot um, a lot as you know in the travel industry um, and is both available in Android and, and Apple. This is how the administration panel looks like. This is how the website, um, as I say, is AAA uh, accessible for all. And all in all, it's a great tool as a first step for uh, travel destinations in order to uh, make an overview and see how they're doing in terms of accessibility and promoting and communicating uh, all this information. Um, I hope this um, has been interesting in any way. Um, thank you for your attention.
Thank you, Daniel. Before I give the floor to our next speaker, who is going to talk sh uh, about a solution, I would like to summarize briefly the two presentations concerning accessibility as a destination or accessible destination, smart destination. Uh, some very important concepts have been mentioned both by Olaf and by uh, uh, Daniel. The importance of obviously uh, coordinating and networking and working with all the stakeholders, both of the public and private sector, and especially with the disabled people's organizations, it's, it's essential. But um, it's also essential to unify at, at national level all the uh, systems, accessibility certification systems, so as not to create uh, confusion for the tourist, for the foreign uh, tourist that comes from abroad. Um, one important issue was mentioned uh, by Olaf, which is training. Training of the staff that is uh, welcoming uh, the persons uh, with access needs. It is important that the staff and the managers, as you, manage, as you mentioned, know, understand, and address the need, all the needs um, of a customer with disability. So it's really important that the customer feels themselves welcome, uh, that uh, they are treated with courtesy and efficiency, and that all the necessary information and complete information are provided to them by the staff. Another important uh, concept that was mentioned by Daniel is the promotion and the marketing. Here it is important, uh, UNW2 has been working on accessibility for many years and we have pre um, launched and published several recommendations and uh, published several technical manual. In terms of uh, marketing and promotion, what we have uh, seen uh, by experts is that the uh, offer of accessible tourism and uh, the offer specifically address um, for person, to persons with disabilities or, or, or the seniors should be included, incorporated in, in the general marketing of the destination and, 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 and of, the, of the offerings of the destination. It, should, it shouldn't be separate. It should be part of the general a marketing strategy and promotion strategy of the destination. So it, 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 it's what we at least recommend. Now, I'm pleased to give the floor, uh, open up for the solution that are being proposed uh, first by Illunion, uh, by Roberto Torena, and later on by Visionfly, uh, Manel Alcaide, who, will, who has sent us the video. So, uh, Roberto, please, the floor is yours. Thank you. Hello, everyone. First of all, I want to make you a question. How many of you know or have seen a blind person using a mobile? Please raise your hand. One, two, not many, okay. Can a blind person use a mobile? Let's start by the very beginning. Okay, let me show you something. Voiceover on. Inside timer. Okay, this is voiceover. Videos. Wallet. Reminders. iTunes Store. Hell. Home. FaceTime. Extras folder. Six apps. Action. Voiceover on. This is how a blind person uses a mobile. Okay, this voice is already in the mobile. You don't need to create anything uh, special. Okay, you only need to create things that are compatible with this system. This voiceover, people we, that cannot move their arms use another system, but all of them can be compatible with any system that you design. So you only need to be sure that your system is compatible with this. You don't need to be anything complex, okay? It's very easy. Uh, what I'm going to show you right now is one application that is not designed yet for people with disability. Let me be <laughs> very specific. It's designed for everyone. We don't design solutions for people with disability. We design 
solutions that interest everyone and ca that can be used also for people with disabilities. Okay. I'm going to skip this very fast. This is the hardware part. Okay. The solution is going to be implemented in museums and uh, exhibition centers. And we need some devices that are called beacons. It's our brand, but uh, they are iBeacons that send a signal in Bluetooth low energy uh, that have a short range of 15 to 30 meters, which means that when your mobile detects this, this device, it means that you are in a specific room of the museum or of the exhibition center. So we can know where the visitors that are using this app are around the museum, okay? Uh, what are we going to use this? We are going to use it, this to create a, an application that will make the museum is more uh, multimedia, interactive, and inclusive for everyone. It doesn't mind if you are an expert and you are looking for uh, learning something new or you are a family with, with children that are looking for different things, games or something more funny or if you have a disability or not, okay? The, the general idea is to provide something that can be useful for everyone. It's a single platform, which means that the museums doesn't need to create their own application. If there is a single application, only one, and each museum can update all the information, can uh, update the content, the ideas, the um, games or whatever, even the, the look and feel. And when someone goes to the, this application to a specific museum, only the information of this museum is available there. It, this is also relevant because of the artist's rights. Usually the museum have uh, paid for the rights to to present something in a specific location. If they want to bring it to the internet, they have to pay a different right. So uh, this is a way to, to establish that the information is only active when the person is inside the museum. And also it's a way to attract people to the museum. Okay, uh, right now it's already deployed in one museum on one exhibition and uh, we have just started, so along the following months, I hope you will see it in many museums around Spain. The general idea is that uh, the museums can upload all the information that they have. If they have only textual information, they can upload it. If they have videos, they can upload it. If they have um, some specific uh, characteristics, features, functions that are demanded by people with disabilities, for example, audio guide, uh, audio, sorry, uh, audio description videos for people with blindness or sign language videos for people with, with uh, deafness, they can upload it, okay? Uh, most of the times when some museums do this sort of uh, uh, initiatives, people with disabilities doesn't know it, so they don't ask for it. So uh, in this application, Here you can see that there are some icons to specifically tell the person some information about the accessibility of this specific route, okay? Uh, you can create several routes for several purposes, for the topic that the, of the museum or for the time that the person is going to have to make this route. Here you can see a route uh, of, of 45 minutes, another of 20 minutes, uh, the, depending on the characteristics on the uh, facilities that you have for people with disabilities, it will be also uh, make available for them through these icons, okay? Uh, if it's accessible for, for wheelchair users, one of the routes, it's also established by a specific icon. And uh, let me, okay. Um, on the right side, you have the information of a specific element. You can establish the information by element or by uh, the specific room. It depends on what do you want to do with this information of the museum. 
and we take advantage that we know where the user is in order to give them some warning in case they are reading the information of a specific step of step five, but the user is still in the first room. So we can give them this warning and say, okay, you are in the wrong place or within the wrong things. If you want, we can give you the right information that is another one, okay? And we can provide the specific uh, information for the specific room in which the user is at that moment. Also, thanks to this location system, we can provide a map to the user and establish where he or she is. So if there is a very big museum and he's a bit lost, he can you know, know where he is and where he needs to go. We have also entered some uh, artificial intelligence tool to uh, automatic image recognition uh, because sometimes we want this to be very interactive and finding information of a specific element that you have in front of you can be as complex as, okay, let's go to the room, let's go to the element, click in the element, or just aim this element with your camera. As simple as that, you just aim the element to the camera and automatically all the information is provided. So it's more easy to access. Uh, the, another interesting fact is uh, that right now in all the systems, especially in touristic environments, we want to provide uh, comments and uh, it, this is no different. Users will be able to provide comments on the specific elements that are shown or on a specific route uh, whenever the museum wants. Some museums doesn't want it because they are afraid of what people can say, but other museums want it. So the, the platform is make it available for those museums that want it. This is uh, more or less uh, uh, what is a, a current audio guide, but with additional feathers, but we want it to go beyond that. So let's make it a bit more amused. That's why this is called amuse. Um, and we enter some gamification techniques in which uh, uh, people going around all these museums can collect masters and tools, depending on which museum you will have one or another. Uh, the, when you enter in the museum, you will have a tip telling you where uh, you can find this master or tool. And when you reach this room, the system automatically sends you a test. This test can be a question uh, that you ca can answer with the information that is around you. Uh, or you can make also a test that uh, requires that the visitor aims some element in the museum with the camera, for example, to make it more, more interactive. Uh, in this case, uh, obviously for people with blindness, there is an alternative that is a question always because the, the whole tool has to be accessible, accessible for everyone. And if you uh, have the enough points and pass all the tests, you start collecting all these masters and tools from museum to museum. This is the, 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 the face for the user, but what is the front office for the, for the museum manager? Most of the museum managers uh, from time to time develop an application that sometimes is accessible, most of the time it's not, and then it is finished and it's there forever. And this is not very useful because you are changing the information and you need to change uh, the elements that you are showing. You, need, you want, in this case, to change the, the games and, and everything. So what is behind this system is a, a web in, in which you can manage all the functionalities in your museum. What are the routes, what are the elements, what is the information you can upload a new accessible uh, measures that you have uh, improved uh, or you can change the game, you can do whatever through a website. So you don't need any programmer to keep it updated uh, forever. In an, this is an easy and useful way. So uh, we invite, if any of you is responsible of a museum, 
to make your museum more interactive and inclusive for everyone. Thank you, Roberto. I would just highlight um, of your uh, tool and your solution, the importance that you said that it's a solution for everyone. It's the solution that makes life easier for everybody, for the people with disabilities and uh, all of us. So thank you very much, uh, Roberto. Now I would like to give the, well, put the project the video by Manel uh, from Visual Fly. Thank you. y soy cofundador de Visual Fly. Lo primero pediros disculpas por no poder estar aquí esta tarde con vosotros. Good afternoon, my name is Manel, and I'm the um, owner of Visual Fly. I apologize for not being able to see. It's a startup created by people that are blind and deaf. That through our system enables them to. Well, there are different types of uh, communication systems uh, that adapt differently to different uh, people that are deaf. When we think of someone deaf, we think of someone using sign language. However, among us, we have a lot of people that are also uh, deaf that we can identify easily. Uh, aid systems and cochlear implants um, are increasingly more sophisticated and revolutionizing uh, deaf this field. At present, the According to the World Health Organization, there's more than 40 to 60 million with hearing in, uh, impairment. And one third of the population, over 65 years old, has disabling hearing. This is also impacting people between 20 and 35 years because they're used, misuse of, of uh, headphones. So we have uh, hearing impairment issues coming up at an earlier age. So, as I say, a third of the population, over 65 years old, has disabling hearing loss. And we're also leading longer lives. So putting in a scenario where we estimate that by 2050, the number of people with hearing loss will be about 1 billion. Given this situation, we should raise awareness in the, to our, in the industry to invest in this target, which is increasing every day. Today, we, we are, there's, there's a lot of awareness with architectural barriers. Most new buildings have accessibility, ramps, braille, new lifts, adapted bathrooms, and so on. That's great. But what about people that have hearing loss? It's an invisible disability. It means that we're not covering their needs. This means that a customer that pays the same as any other customer cannot enjoy the same experience like an other person. Accessibility is not just for disabilities, for disabled people. We all know the importance that user experience has in tourism, and that's what accessibility is all about, ensuring that any user can improve the experience with that particular brand, regardless of any disability that, indi that an individual might have. Most of you are probably thinking, have we ever had a deaf customer visit us? Well, the thing is that deaf people, this deaf, deaf is uh, invisible and it's stigmatized, so people normally hide the fact that they are deaf, which is erroneously attributed to all oh, misunderstanding and so on. So it means, we, it means that we don't really know the customers with hearing loss that co come across our facilities. And this kind of solution will be, it will be very good to improve their experience with a particular brand. We need to understand that or know that eye uh, sight loss is something that's perfectly normalized. It's okay if you're wearing glasses, but if you're wearing a hearing aid, you're disabled, instantly disabled person. This means that a lot of people uh, try to hide the fact that they're deaf. And in fact, the real numbers are probably higher than that published by the World Health Organization. But times are changing, and we need to be prepared for that. As we know, that people with hearing loss are coming out of the closet. Now, for example, people that wear glasses are very fashionable, whereas it used to be people with glasses uh, wasn't fashionable at all. And I think very soon the same thing's going to happen with hearing aid and cochlear implants. 
think with the improved technologically, technological improvements, technological improvements, and better connected. But the fact that they're wearing the systems and they can, doesn't mean that they can hear better. It does help them to communicate better. But once you get to a house or a hotel, you need to disconnect your implant or your hearing aid to charge it. Or, for example, or even just to take a take a shower or to enjoy silence. So they continue. They need other the uh, other assistance, other aid. And this is what Visual Fire helps them with. Visual Fire is a technology aimed at helping visual and sensorial space in a private space, as well as public spaces. It improves the quality of life, the independence, and the user experience of deaf people or people with hearing loss. We have a few solutions, such as Visual by Home, Visual by Home, a system that can alert you of any noise that takes place in the house. Uh, it, it sends a note, uh, a warning to either the tele television, your smartphone, or anything that's connected. But today I want to talk about Visual by Places, technology created to improve experience uh, people that would hear and experience hearing loss in a hotel. The system ensures the experience of the user within the hotel, that, uh, uh, an enhanced experience. It enriches also the corporate social responsibility of the brand, and it opens the doors to a new target, people with or hearing loss. We have different types of accessibility packages. The first one is technological solution to devices located in the room. It alerts the user that someone's calling and tell them that the baby's crying or that the fire alarm is off. This system is also complemented with a panic button as requested by the, by, the, by, the, by the law, which is given to them when they arrive at the hotel. So they can alert the lobby on any situation of anything happening in uh, the room. And uh, the lobby can also report back to the user to let them know that help is on its way. This also, they can also have, for example, call for a taxi, or on call service, internet service. And also, oh, this is completed with a beacon in the hotel, which informs to any, um, not just the hotel guests, but also to anyone going past the hotel that this hotel is friendly for people with hearing loss. We can take it even further. There's another solution to help in communication that has, has accessible content in sign language, subtitles, and audio, which will improve significantly the experience of the hotel, not just for deaf uh, people, but also for anyone in the hotel. We also come up with new e beacons that can be located next to the restaurant or leisure points to promote our services to any visitor. Uh, with accessible content in three ways, either through uh, the audio, sign language, or, or subtitles, or video, and also magnetic loops that enable the users uh, with uh, cochlear implants. We can also use another system to enable them to have uh, LEC, interpreters, a call center was created by the Spanish Confederation of Deaf People and through a video conference that gives video interpretation in real time. This service is uh, serviced by deaf people and by specialized certified interpreters. All our services include free access to an e-learning platform where employees can, take, uh, can learn uh, well, the basic guidelines for all the employers and how employees and how to handle p um, guests with hearing loss. We also have other consulting services on European and European uh, financing available. Visual Fi is committed to technology for all. Access to internet and technology in general has changed our lives. But uh, the question is to everyone. I think it's time that companies now address the issue. Not just because the European recommendations are aimed at this and very soon will become a directive, but it's also our responsibility to offer products and services that are designed for all people. We'll be more accessible, but we'll be also be better companies for all, invisible to all. Thank you very much. This uh, solution that VisualFi offers us, I think, is very interesting. Uh, 
And so I would like to know, oh, does anyone have any questions for our speakers, for our panelists? Again, if a microphone is not used, we cannot translate. Please be sure that you hold it up to your mouth. A few months ago in Cordoba, in, in the city, there were some uh, so people who are poorly sighted. The important thing of this experience is the fact that we have gone through another system, not just a private system, which is working through civil society, through training, and the people who have developed this is a non nonprofit organization. This has worked out very well with very high uh, social yield because one of our aims was inclusion. So having worked through an NGO, has enabled us to receive the approval of the municipality. And I think it was a gentleman from Granada, if I'm not mistaken, who is proposing this, not only in Spain, but all over Europe. Ex excuse me, can you identify yourself? Former uh, civil servant, uh, uh, currently living in Cordoba. So this was not a question, it was an observation. An observation. But my question is, how do you uh, plan to uh, deploy your systems on the market, in the marketplace? It is called barriers. We know them for a long time ago. Uh, indeed, uh, yeah, uh, indeed uh, the, the first hardware that we have Shown you, in which is a music basic, is called Bitcoin. It, it was before all barriers, is uh, sorry, all competence in this sense. <laughs> uh, both systems are pretty similar, all is patented, uh, and ours is also deployed in plenty places here in Madrid and in many places. We belong to the Spanish organization of blind people, so I mean, our focus is also. Uh, uh, social and uh, our enterprise is a, a special employment center. Our business group gives employment for uh, 10,000 people with disabilities. Uh, and the business and uh, all on the group, uh, I don't know the number, but it's a large amount. I mean, uh, our focus is also social. Um, uh, this is a specific deployment, uh, a specific uh, hardware based uh, solution that is focuses on people with blindness. We have also plenty of them, but the solution that I presented here is just built on top of that, so we can provide a solution for everyone. That's our focus right now, okay? We can provide the other solution more specifically for people with, with blindness, but we think that in order to promote it and make private organizations be interested in it, we have to go further and provide a solution that may bring more clients to them not only people with blindness. So we are developing these solutions on top, taking advantage on a solution specifically designed for blind people, but providing added value for everyone. Any other questions? I would like, in this case, just to, to pose, to, to ask one quick question addressed to all of, of you, of our speakers. Uh, in order to make a smart destination, a destination truly accessible. What needs to, to change most urgently? Um, are these the norms, the standards, regulation, investment, better understanding? What is your opinion on that? Um, well, I think um, there is different, uh, there's different uh, areas that have to be improved. Um, I think one of them is, um, is, is related with uh, educating the sector. Um, it happens in, 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 in my case, in, in I, I, I personally, I, I run an online travel agency specialized in accessible tourism, 
and it happens to me that it's not a it's not it's not a problem of awareness. It seems like uh, awareness uh, is not 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 it's not the main issue. Uh, not as much as knowing um, what and, and understanding uh, people basically. Uh, in the previous talk, someone said um, uh, understanding people is the first. Uh, and then we'll have to understand uh, technology, because uh, World of Society, the Professor uh, Massimo Marchiori. I, would, I totally agree. And uh, in terms of accessibility, I think it's, it's really the case. Uh, understanding, uh, understanding ourselves in a, uh, as we are very diverse, and we may or we may not have um, accessibility needs. Uh, it could be dietary requirements but uh, understanding people. Um, so uh, we, can call it, uh, we can call it awareness, we can call it uh, education, empathy, um, but the, the, the paradigm uh, in that way, in my opinion, has to, uh, is, is one of the areas that, in my opinion, uh, uh, we have to work on. Yes, I can underline this, empathy and uh, the open-hearted Welcome to uh, people with uh, uh, some kind of handicap. That is really a key issue next to technical stuff. Um, but the, you know, the field of tourism partners who, we, who have still to be convinced is quite wide. You know, um, we urgently need data to, to prove also the economic uh, issue. You know, it's, uh, some are already convinced, but uh, we could have more information on that um, to provide it to the tourism partners and thinking along the tourism supply chain. This is a huge challenge. You know, we have single entities already barrier free, but to work together and to, to promote them together and to welcome the uh, handicapped guests together, it's still a task, you know. Roberto? We've been on your comments. Um, if any of you is interested, uh, Onsu Foundation published an uh, interesting study on tourism in Spain, okay? Because, yes, one of the main things that we have to do is make the private organizations uh, aware that there is a business here, okay? So this study were focused on what is the willingness to pay of people with disabilities, how many travels they are willing to do, and so on, and so on, and so on. And, uh, putting all these numbers together and showing it makes a real proof of this is a real market and you have to do it in order not to lose this opportunity uh, in the market. All right, thank you very much. So um, in concluding, I would just like to mention three points that were uh, um, presented today. Uh, lastly, what Olaf said, the importance of the accessibility chain in tourism. Um, all the elements of the tourism chain should be accessible, um, from starting from the information, access to information, accessible accommodation, accessible local transportation, accessible leisure and visits. The accessibility chain, chain um, has to be uh, um, accessible at all the links. This is really important. We have heard and we have seen that also uh, smart destinations more and more are developing tourism practices that in t uh, take into account the diversity of the human condition. So in terms of age, mobility, sensory and intellectual uh, impairment, so it's good news. But we still have to encourage and insist other destinations uh, to follow suit. And finally, um, if uh, with a careful uh, approach which combines uh, socially inclusive policies, new technologies and digital information tools without forgetting the universal design techniques that unfortunately we didn't mention it um, during the, the panel but are extremely important, universal um, design uh, principles and techniques destination managers and tour tourism providers will be able to cater effectively to all tourists and all visitors. So this was uh, more or less the conclusions 
uh, of today's panel on accessible destinations, smart destinations. I've been asked before um, I close the, the panel to remind all participants that tomorrow morning the uh, proceedings, uh, the meetings will start at, na at nine o'clock sharp. So please, um, those who are here, uh, will be here tomorrow, at nine o'clock, we'll start again with the uh, remaining panels. So with this, um, I thank you very much. Uh, the f I thank the three panelists, excellent pa uh, panelists, and all the participants and the audience who has uh, taken the time to stay until the end. Thank you very much. <laughs>